And once more, dear friends, we are going into the breach of your Catholic. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to The front line with Joe and Joe. You acted like an American. Okay, now there's a number of different things that have to be done in this country to change the culture, which will in turn change the politics. And the culture's a swamp. But that is not a Catholic teaching. Right. And the cafeteria is closed, my friend. Yeah. Joe Pasillo joined as always by Joe Resinello. And once more, dear friends, we are going into the breach. He tells the truth, just like we do at the front line with Joe and Joe on Sunday nights, 8 o'clock, Facebook Live. We got a great show for you tonight because, as we always say, the left is teeing it up for us, and we're Barry Bonds standing at home plate, ready to knock their lies right into San Francisco Bay. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to The Frontline with Joe and Joe. Joe Pasillo, joined as always by Joe Resinello. And once more, dear friends, we are going into the breach in a very interesting way tonight, because we have a special guest. Um, our guest tonight is Rick Delano. He's an independent filmmaker, documentary filmmaker, and all-around troublemaker, and we love it. And that's why he's on our show. Uh, just to give you a little background, Rick's last movie. Uh, Rick, when did that movie come out, The, uh, the Principal? Principal came out in 2014. 2014. Uh, just to give you an example and just to lay the groundwork for what, what Rick goes through with his films, um, the movie The Principal was universally lambasted, okay, before the movie was even released. Before anybody even had even seen the movie, because of its premise, it was immediately uh, panned as being something not worth seeing. And I sense, Rick, correct me if I'm wrong, you're about to go through the same thing with your new movie, which is coming out. Correct me, it, uh, it is, it, it, it's... Um, the End of Quantum Reality. The End of Quantum Reality, quantum reality yeah. which I'm sure you're going to go through the same thing with. So that's why I say, you're a troublemaker, <laughs> we love you, and now you're on our show <laughs> to talk to our audience about why we should all care about whether geocentrism or the end of quantum reality, uh, and we could we could get into it, and it's your platform, brother. I love it. Well, thank you. It, you really mentioned an interesting thing, Joe. I have had my eye up in the sky waiting for the carpet bombing to start on this project, and it just hasn't. And I can't figure out why, but. I think there's two reasons why. First of all, everybody who attacked the principal ended up looking really, really stupid. Mm -hmm. I mean, these stories that they put out, all the people in the film were saying, oh, we were never in this film. And then, of course, when they realized that they were, they started saying, well, we had no idea what it was about. Right, of course. And, of course. And I kept, you know, I kept making little videos where I'd say, you know, I really appreciate this idea that I was clever enough to trick the world's leading cosmologist into sitting down and talking with me on camera for five hours. I still haven't been able to figure out how I got them to move their lips like that. Mm -hmm. And ultimately they ended up uh, looking so stupid that they just basically ignored us, forgot about us. And we went on to do very, very well with the principal still doing very, very well. Yeah, I now, confess that I haven't gotten the... Um... I, I confess that I haven't gotten the uh, the principal yet. It's one of those things that's that's on my list to do. Now I have now I have obviously have much more of an incentive to watch that. And when um, and when this film comes out, so I know Joe wants to Joe wants to start it off. Uh, but I do want to st start out if it's okay, Rick, this way. Um, who is Wolfgang Smith, and why is what he's saying matters? What is he saying that's ruffling, let's say, feathers? and is a threat to the scientific establishment. Okay. Wolfgang Smith is genius. I mean, this is a guy who was accepted into Cornell University at 15. He graduated at age 18 with degrees in mathematics, physics, and philosophy. By the time he was 20, he had a graduate degree in quantum physics from Purdue University, ended up getting his doctorate in mathematics from Columbia, started teaching at MIT, ended up teaching at MIT, UCLA, Oregon State. This guy is just, you know, he, he, he's brilliant. Mm -hmm. What makes him interesting is that when he was 14 years old, they, they sent him this uh, form from Cornell. What do you want to study? He said, physics. Why do you want to study physics? 
because that is how you figure out the truth about the world. And there's a wonderful moment in the film where he's recounting this story and he smiles this little smile, he pauses for a moment and then he looks up and he says, needless to say, I've changed my mind about that. What Wolfgang is, is that extremely rare genius who knows quantum physics, mathematics at a postgraduate level, who has made original contributions to major research related to the re-entry problem in spacecraft. This guy has all the credentials in the world, but he is also a profound student of the traditional schools of wisdom of mankind. And of course, one of the ones that he has specialized in, and as a matter of fact, the one that he personally considers to be, quote, the safest for us is the Thomistic uh, philosophy of St. Thomas Aquinas, which was, of course, the foundation of the Catholic world. Everything that we knew about the world when we used to run things with Christendom was based upon this monumental genius, Thomas Aquinas, who took classic Greek wisdom, basically Aristotle, and sort of baptized it so that it would be commensurate with the revelation of Jesus Christ. And this was the most profound synthesis of wisdom in the history of the world. It's why the West eventually gave rise to a civilization that became dominant throughout the world. Now, the story gets interesting right around the time of Newton and Galileo and Copernicus. Because for the first time since the gospel was preached in the West, a story started to emerge about a different world than the world we read about in the scriptures, the world that every Catholic, every Christian believed in unquestioningly. And the key to understanding this change is first of all, for the Catholic, for even today, for the Catholic who believes the world is, a, is something that emerges from above. It's something that comes down to us from God, right? That mm. the source of the world is above us. It's coming from a place that's higher than this world. The Enlightenment turned that idea on its head and began to look for the world at its bottom. And I got to tell you guys, every single one of us, from the time we were six years old and started to go to school, we have all been inculcated with this fundamental idea. If you look down at the table that your computers are sitting on right now, and I ask you, what is it made of? If we talk about it long enough, you're ultimately going to say, it's made of a bunch of particles. That's what it's made of. Everything that we see is made of these fundamental particles. And that was the fundamental idea that brought enlightenment, the enlightenment world story into the world. And it was a doozy. Let me tell you, the triumphs that emerged from this approach to say, no, the world is not a mystery that comes down to us from above. It's something that we can measure and cast an experiment on and it basically boils down to a bunch of these little hard particles that we'll call atoms down at the bottom they had a 400 year run of triumph after triumph every miracle of the modern world has come out of that research program including the computers we're talking on right now ultimately nobody doubted that they had to be right and then just at the moment when triumph seemed to be at hand, the strangest thing in the history of science happened. And that strangest thing in the history of science is what we call today quantum mechanics. After all these centuries, they finally had the instruments that were sensitive enough to actually look down and see and find these fundamental particles, the electron, the photon, 
the atoms of the world were finally accessible to the instruments of the physicists. And I, I got to tell you guys, it's the strangest thing that ever happened in the history of the world. They finally got down there to where they were going to be able to find these hard little balls, these atoms. And what they found is that they're not there. What they found is that down at the bottom of the world, there are no hard little balls particles. Now, nobody believes me when I say this. Nobody believes me when I say to them, physics has arrived at its foundational level and there ain't nothing down there. Well, how could there not be something down there, Rick? There's all these atoms and this and that and the other thing. None of them exist until we measure them. That is the fundamental quantum reality problem in a nutshell. Physics has decided that you should be multi-locating, Joe, and so should you, Joe. There should be many of you, a cloud of yous, because that's what atoms are. They aren't in any one location. The cat is both dead and alive at the same time, because in quantum mechanics, you have what they call superposition. Different states can be added together. The particle is not in any one place. It's in a bunch of places. And all that physics can tell us about that particle is the probabilities of where it will turn out to be if you measure it. Before you measure it, it ain't anywhere. This is the most stupendous thing. As a matter of fact, it's very hard for many people to believe, but I assure you it's true. As a matter of fact, Brian Herbert, a physicist, wrote a book about this, which is a big part of the research we did for the film. And he has a wonderful quote. He says, one of the best kept secrets of science is that physicists have lost their grip on reality. And this is why we say quantum reality. If the world is made up of these particles, Joe and Joe, you should be multi-located. Because certainly the fundamental particles that you're made out of do. No question about it. The computer works because those particles multilocate. If we're made out of those particles, why aren't we multilocate? This has been what's called the quantum reality problem for a hundred years. And what Wolfgang Smith did was he solved it. I had heard about Wolfgang Smith when I was making the principle. He was almost like this legendary figure. Everybody had heard of him, but nobody knew if he was even still alive. He's been very reclusive his entire life. He's never sought the spotlight, but he had written this astounding book, The Quantum Enigma. And this book was such a mind blower. Having done the principle where we looked at the world on its largest scales, the cosmology, the universe on its largest scales, that's what the principle is about. I wanted to look at the world on its very smallest scales because that's where the wheels are coming off even more than they are in cosmology. Because we can't explain why quantum physics works so perfectly until we measure. The very instant we measure, all these multi-locating particles instantly collapse down into one particle, one value, just like our world. And nobody has the faintest clue. A hundred years later, they don't have the faintest clue why that should be. Rick, let me let me ask you something, because I know that the film gives, uh, just for the viewer, the film gives a crash course in physics from a layman's mm -hmm. perspective, from Newton to Einstein to, 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 to today. Mm -hmm. But Smith's solution, as you said, uh, is a return to the Aristotelian Thomistic metaphysics. That's what, right. what pushback has he had? I'm, I'm assuming that most... Uh, academics have given some pushback to this reality? Actually, no. Here's why. They literally can't believe. They can't understand. See, this goes so deep. Like, for example, when we made the principle, all you have to do is say the word geocentrism. Don't have to do any more than that. Just say the word and watch people go crazy. <laughs> start coming out of their ears. Watch them absolutely go berserk because we are deeply conditioned, and I mean deeply 
condition. To automatically assume that anybody who would take such an idea seriously is crazy. All right. But isn't but isn't science, Rick? Isn't the reason we do science is to show that if you if you present an idea, regardless of what other people are going to say, there's science that you that you have to do to back it up. Oh, so the brilliant. judgment so the judgment right off the bat from the the uh, the the Michael Shermers of the world and the Lawrence Krauses of the world, their their judgment shouldn't be, well, what kind of science are you doing? Or what's your religious view? Okay, it should be. Let me look at the science. See, you a scientist it. says, let me look at the math. Let me look at the science. I know based on a couple of interviews I saw with you and some of the people from the principal, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Max Tegmark said, it seems right, but I want to look at the math. To me, that's an appropriate way to react is, let me look at the math. Let me look at the science. You, I watch you again in an interview with Shermer, where Rick, I gotta admit, you 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 fit in with the front line with Joe and Joe because you're definitely a talker. <laughs> but the only thing that Michael Shermer could say was, "What's your religion, Rick?" As though it's as so though that matters when you're doing science. Look, Why should it matter? Why can't they just refute your science with better science? What's wrong right, with that? Let's cut right to the bottom line, guys. Wolfgang Smith says there are two things that often get confused. On the one hand, you have science. What is science? Science is exactly what you just said, Joe. If it's science, you can show it to me in the lab anytime I freaking want to look at it, okay? It's not a matter of opinion. It's not a matter if my hair is combed right. The experiment will show it every single time. That's science. You can count on it because it works, because it's not a matter of opinion. It's not a matter, you flip the light switch on, you don't have to have the right politics or the right religion for the light bulb to work. That's science. But on top of science, you have this thing called scientism. And scientism is this fairy tale world story that is erected as if it were science, but is it? Let me give you the classic example, okay? Have you guys ever heard the word multiverse? Sure. In the culture, yeah, you hear it here and there. Okay. Multiverse. What does that mean? Well, good luck finding out what it actually means. But what it turns out to be is something that must be introduced into the world story because natural processes can't explain this world without it. Now, stick with me here because this is the whole ball game. Mm -hmm. Remember, science gets started right around the, you know, the, the Enlightenment. And, you know, just to give you this sort of cartoon version, supposedly all the theologians were sitting there arguing about how many angels could dance on the head of a pin. And the physicists, or the natural philosophers, as they were called at the time, they got tired of this. They said, you know, we're not going to do this anymore. We're going to stick to what we can see, observe, test, and measure. If we can't observe it, measure it, or test it, it's not part of science, and we don't want anything to do with it. That was a brilliant strategy, by the way. Now, fast forward 400 years. What are they talking about now? The multiverse. What is the multiverse? The multiverse, by definition, by definition, is something that can neither be observed, nor measured, nor tested upon, or experimented upon in any way at all. We've come full circle. Supposedly hard-headed empirical science is giving birth to completely metaphysical speculations like the multiverse. Why? Because they can't make this world happen by natural processes unless there's an infinity of other universes and this one just happened to get lucky. But they present, but Rick, correct me if I'm wrong, they present it as though, oh no, don't you know that there is a multiverse? We'll, do, we'll find it, we'll find it, we'll prove it. We have indirect evidence. Um, this is what I've heard from people, just in, well, in, uh, in and, that's just and, anecdotal. And, and, this is what I've heard from people. Don't worry, we'll find it. Science will find it. Don't worry. But there is a multiverse. 
There is a multiverse. I, that's that the way it was is, supposed to be. That is a statement of faith. What that is, is it is a confession of faith. It has nothing to do with science. Nothing at all. Science, remember, deals with that which we can observe, test, measure, and experiment upon. When they say multiverse, by definition, what makes it a multiverse? It is causally disconnected from this universe. No signal from that multiverse can ever get to this universe or vice versa. Let me ask you a question. How the heck am I supposed to do an experiment when no signal that I send can ever reach there and no signal that it sends can ever reach here. How is that possibly science? Well, the simple answer is it isn't. It is scientism. It is the great flowering up of a world story supposedly based on science, but in actual fact, in direct contradiction to the limitations that made science so successful. Those limitations, can I observe it? Can I test it? Can I measure it? Can I experiment upon it? If so, is science, it's an object of the scientist. No multiverse can ever, 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 ever be observed. No multiverse can ever be tested. No multiverse can ever be experimented upon. It is not an object of science. It is a form of mathematical metaphysics, and it pops out of the math precisely because they can't get the math to give us a world that looks like this one. If there's only one world like this one. In order to get a world like this one that's so finely tuned, that looks so designed, that frankly, Looks like it was created by a super intelligence. Can't have you that. just just that that just kills the argument. That they can't it. that kills. They so can't crazy. they can't digest that. They no, listen. you're you're That's absolutely, absolutely right. Game. That's the whole ball game. They will fight to the bitter end because they are smart enough to know that they've had a great run for four hundred years. They've had miracles, they've had successes, and God bless them, they've done a fantastic job. But the problem is they weren't satisfied with that. They wanted a total story of the world that reduced to physics. And they have failed miserably at both extremities of scale. They failed with their Big Bang universe because the Big Bang universe just isn't cooperating. They keep inventing. Do you realize, let me ask you a question. You guys ever heard of dark matter and dark energy? Heard of it. Heard of dark matter. I've never heard it defined by anybody, but I've heard of it. Well, let me define it for you. Dark matter and dark energy are terms that have to be plugged into the Einstein equations in order to bridge a 95.9% gap between what we see in our telescopes and what we're supposed to see according to the Einstein gravitational equations. Let me put this even more simply. Everybody believes in gravity, right? Yeah. Sure. Come on, everybody believes. Guess what? Physicists must add in by hand, out of thin air, 95.9% of the mass, energy, budget of the universe form of, quote, dark matter and, quote, dark energy. Otherwise, the Einstein equations are 95.9% wrong. Now, how many people do you suppose know that? Scientists. How, Scientist. how many people? How many people the know, ones that know it. <laughs> how many people know that when they are talking about dark matter and dark energy, when they are talking about the multiverse, as if these things were somehow established facts. No one has ever found dark matter. No one has ever found dark energy. And no one has ever found a multiverse. 
in order to make the existing equations of physics work at the large scales of the universe, you got to stir in 95.9% of the mass and energy of the universe out of thin air. Now, you would think that that might raise a few eyebrows here and there, right? But it does. It does. Some of these cosmologists are beginning to get very nervous. This is something that is not calculated to make a true scientist exactly feel wonderful about things. If your model requires that 95% of the universe be added in out of thin air and you can't find it, well, that should be somewhat humbling, correct? You think? Well, I think what it would also do is if your worldview is based purely upon science and mathematics that cannot be proven, it has to make you question how this place came about. And I always love in the arguments, particularly around abortion, when they point to science, but as science has evolved, particularly around the sonogram, particularly around genetics, particularly around how early the heartbeat can be detected, then all of a sudden they throw science out and they Bravo. basically just call it what it is, murder. That's In this particular case, they're saying the universe was created outside of God, but they cannot prove it, and it's blowing right. the doors off of their theory. You're absolutely right. At the end of the day, all of this is ultimately ideology-driven. When I thought hear, we were the ideologists. I thought we yeah. were the, I, 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 from their view. This is, this is why Wolfgang Smith is such an important freaking thinker. 25 years ago, he had figured out that physics was changing. See, he comes from the great old school. He was at Cornell when Richard Feynman was at Cornell. I mean, this guy grew up when to get a degree in physics, man, you had to do physics. This guy was one of the first generation of students who studied quantum mechanics after the founders. Things were rigorous back then. And he noticed that this was changing. He noticed that the problems they were facing, both in Big Bang cosmology and especially at the other end of the scale, down in quantum physics, were so profound that they were starting to invent ad hoc things like dark matter, dark energy, multiverses, because the only other alternative was to give up on the idea that this all boils down to mathematics, that this all boils down to particles bouncing off of each other. God, what would it mean if there was more to the world than the particles and fields and forces of physics? What if physics can't build this world? Ooh. That's a very dangerous thing to suggest because if the world doesn't emerge from the bottom, from just forces and fields, you know, mathematics, then it's got to emerge from above, from the top. And this is where Aristotle comes in. It's a shame. Every Catholic used to know this. No Catholic knows this now. We're going to have to relearn it. When we hear the word matter, matter, you know, matter, that's the hard stuff you pound on, by golly, that's matter. No, it isn't. It isn't. Matter and form were the classical schools of wisdom. Matter was a principle of receptivity. Matter was that thing which had no existence apart from form. And form had to be added to or or combined with matter in order for us to get something you could hammer. Nobody remembers that, except Thomas Aquinas teaches it and every Catholic student should study it again because that is exactly the matter of quantum physics. There is no hard little ball down there. There's clouds of probabilities and those probabilities suddenly become solid you know, actual things only when we measure them. In other words, only when they come into contact with this world where we don't multilocate, where the cat isn't both dead and alive at the same time. This is the profound meaning of quantum physics. You can't build the world from the bottom up. 
there's something more involved in this table than a bunch of particles. The bunch of particles would follow the, the laws of quantum mechanics. The table doesn't follow the laws of quantum mechanics. The table is in one place. It's very defined. It's solid. It's not multi-locating. That means that what Wolfgang Smith has actually discovered is the necessary fact that there is a world above the world of the physicist and physics cannot believe this. Physics cannot accept that there's more to the world than quantity, more to the world than mathematics. That when we look at a sunset, you know, you know what the physicists tell us that is? That's just a bunch of wavelengths. That's just a bunch of wavelengths. And there's neurons in our brain, you see, that are turning the world into a 3D picture in real time. That's insanity. How did we ever allow ourselves to be bamboozled. I'll tell you why we allowed ourselves to be bamboozled, because they did do some pretty amazing things along the way. The atomic bomb, rockets to the moon, pretty impressive stuff. It was only when quantum physics came along that those who really understood what these experiments were telling us, like Wolfgang, understood that that 400 year great run to reduce the world to quantity, to get rid of God, to get rid of everything that has to do with love or beauty or, or even color or softness or, or sound. All of those things had to be illusions. These were all things that the neurons in our brains were somehow conjuring up. Well, what I'm hearing too is the word humility. Wolfgang is a man who is brilliant, clearly. He went to Cornell at 15. He taught at MIT. He has a PhD from mathematics from Columbia. But he's humble enough to say that I don't have the answer and I'm as smart as it gets. And the people who are involved in this study are as smart as it gets. But we cannot figure it out. There has to be something above. And that's what I'm getting out of it. That's because it. Many the bottom line is you can't get there if you throw out everything in the world except physics. If you think this world ultimately reduces to quantum particles, fields, forces, and equations, I have really bad news for you. You have failed. Now, you achieved a tremendous amount of power by pursuing this strategy, and you made some tremendous breakthroughs. The problem is you can't get a world out of your quantum physics. I think you maybe that's get... why, you know, this is interesting because I always say if I was going to start a world religion as Christ did, I would have chose different people. This is me. I would have looked at, I work in banking. I would have looked at different resumes. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus looked at common men. These were common men who did not have the answers but had faith. You see, I see what you're explaining in Wolfgang Smith is a man who's smart enough to say, I don't have the answer, and I'm as smart as it gets. But most people in those circles will never say that, ever. They can't. The minute that they admit that the world does not reduce to physics and mathematics, they can't get tenure. They can't get published. They will be driven out mercilessly. They but that's a problem in our culture, Rick. Yeah. That's a problem in our culture. That's a problem with our politics. That federal funds, now let's get into this a little bit, like federal funds that go to universities in America, those funds are only going to get distributed to the people, the scientists, who are doing acceptable science. Right on, Not man. questioning the current or the paradigms that have been in place for the last several centuries. Exactly. Don't question our don't question our sacred cows or Joe like Joe and I like to call them their golden calves. If you know where I'm going with that, okay. Trade, That's man. the problem: is money. They control the money, and when because they control yeah. the money, you know they're able they're able to keep basically a hammerlock on the scientific community, because if I'm doing science, I used this analogy before, let's say I'm a brilliant guy and I think I'm gonna come up with a cure for cancer, okay? In other words, and I'm doing science and I need money. I need money to do my scientific experiments because I'm gonna come up with a cure for cancer. And the guy who's giving me the money says, hey, where do you stand on evolution? Yeah. I'm gonna turn around and say, where do you want me to stand on evolution? Say you're in favor, good, I'm in favor. Now give me the money because I'm gonna go back to doing, that's right. what happens. 
They have to go along to get along because, like, they're always like, they love to point to corruption in the Catholic Church. That's corruption. You've corrupted the scientific community. You've corrupted the scientific method. You've corrupted it all for ideology because you want to present a worldview and you want to use, in this particular case, your scientism is to enforce it. And they do it with money. Right on, Joe. You have nailed it. That's what it is. Look, it's really simple. If you run the world, right? We used to, by the way. Up until about 16th, 17th century, we ran the world. And we ran the world because we had the best world story. People could hear the gospel, look at the church, look at the brilliance and magnificence of the church, and they would just say, yeah, man. Yeah, the, the world is the way you say. You have excellent miracles. You have proven bona fides that make it possible for us to believe what you say. Along comes Copernicus and says, you know, they've said the earth is the center of the universe. It's not. Along comes Galileo and says, you know, the scriptures always, you think the scriptures say that we're the first thing created and that we're the center of the world, but we're not. Along comes Newton. God help us, Newton. Newton came up with the first mathematical description of reality. I mean, Newton's equations for gravitation can describe the motion of a planet or the motion of a feather. It's in astounding what he accomplished. And everybody assumed they had a better story. That's why they took over the world. What I'm here to tell you is that like everything else, all good stories have a beginning, a middle, and then this story that we were told by the Enlightenment, we don't need these angels and gods. We just want our particles and our theories and our experiments. They've reached the end of the road. They can't get a world that's anything like this one out of their theories unless you start granting them angels in the form of multiverses angels in the force of in the form of dark matter and dark energy things that they can add in so that their equations can be sort of futzed back into into working again they only work because you're adding things that we can't measure see touch taste or experiment upon they've come full circle they've failed and the failure is most clearly announced in the incredible paradoxes of quantum mechanics. What Wolfgang has shown us and, and, and the film shows us is that inevitably they're going to lose. They got a lot. They're gonna, they got more power than the church did, right? They have more money. I mean, good Lord, they just spent $8 billion building the Large Hadron Collider. It was supposed to find dark matter. Guess how much dark matter they found? Zero. Gots. It was oh, I love find, it. It was supposed to find all these super particles, super symmetry particles that were going to show that the multiverse was real, right? Guess how many super symmetry particles they found? Um, gots. That's eight billion. Listen, that's a big dry hole for anybody. I don't care how rich you are. If you drill an $8 billion empty hole, you st your Adam's apple is going to start going up and down a little bit. Rick, you just made my night by saying I have. I don't think there have ever been in the history of man three men talking about physics and saying umgats. Umgats! At the same time. I love, I love it. I love it. That was fantastic. So basically, <laughs> look, the, the, the film, guys, is really... I don't know how to put this. It'd be nice if people come see it. it, it it'd be great, you know. I did not make the film for now. I made this film for when Wolfgang Smith leaves this world. In the man's 90. Who knows? I mean, he looked pretty darn good to me, smarter than I am, but he's 90. How much longer is he gonna be around? I don't know. God in his mercy, let me find this guy, study this guy. I knew I had to make this film while he was still in the world. The important thing is, when he leaves this world, people will be able to watch this film and understand what allowed him to put the pieces together. What made him different 
than Stephen Hawking and Neil deGrasse Tyson and all these scientistic prophets mm -hmm. who want to talk to us about multiverses and how really every time you blink the world splits off into a trillion copies of itself because that's what quantum mechanics said. That's nonsense. For which there's no proof. For which there's no proof. Not only is there no proof, it is demonstrably insane. What it is telling us is that their theories have driven them to such outlandish, ridiculous assertions that they're enforcing these absurdities in order to maintain their positions of power as the prophets of our civilization. I have bad news for them. They drilled an $8 billion dry hole with the LHC. There's no government in the world that wants to go another 15 billion to see if they might get, get they might hit next time. The game is coming to an end. Good. You know, Good. Yeah, the, there's a wonderful book that was just recently published by a particle physicist, theoretical physicist. Her name is Sabine Hassenfelder. And the book is so beautiful. It's called Lost in Math. Lost in math. That's right where they are. They have developed these mathematical theories that have yielded wonderful results. But starting about 70 years ago, well, not so much 70 years ago, about 50 years ago, around the 1970s, everybody started to buy into this idea of string theory. And string theory was the multiverse. I mean, if you, if the fundamental idea of string theory is that you get a multiverse out of string theory. And the math is so beautiful. I mean, I can't understand, but I'm told it's just, if you are a mathematician, string theory is so beautiful, you just can't even believe it. It has to be right. It's so beautiful. Well, guess what? It might be beautiful, but it certainly isn't true. Well, how do we know that? Because if it was true, we would have found these particles at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. We didn't. They're not there. This is a big deal. It'll take another 10 or 15 years for this to kind of filter down to the level of culture because physics is upstream of culture. You know, when somebody says to you, dude, that's your reality. You heard anybody say that? You know yeah. where that comes from? That comes from quantum mechanics. Nobody would say that 200 years. I mean, a madman wouldn't say that 200 years ago. That, that's downstream of quantum mechanics. When somebody says, dude, Everything's relative. You know where that comes from? That's downstream from Einstein. Right. Our culture is downstream of physics. The great news is physics has reached a profound dead end. And Wolfgang Smith has been able to come up with the, not only why it's at a dead end, but how we can resituate the world. You know what this movie does? It turns your world right back, right side up. It turns your world right side up because when you're looking down, 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 smaller and smaller and smaller into the particles, you end up going crazy with a multiverse, dark matter and dark energy. When you turn your look, your view back up and re-enter the world of substantial forms where being is something that doesn't come from particles down below. Being is something that comes from this, the bestower of forms, God. You don't lose a single bit of quantum mechanics. You can still do quantum mechanics to your heart's content. Rick, let me cut, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question because that's important. Uh, what you're talking about, of course, is metaphysics. Okay, that's exactly now, that's right. But but the thing is, again, Joe and I obviously can't talk about, let's say, getting into the, the down and dirty of all the science and the math. But agendas and strategies, okay. Because if you listen to some of these people in the last 10 or 15 years, okay, metaphysically, some Joe went to Joe went to a Jesuit school in Pennsylvania. I went to Seton Hall don't University. Don't hold it against me. <laughs> yeah, don't hold it against me. You know, you know, with your faith intact, man. I'm impressed. But but Joe, uh, uh, but um, but Rick, here's my point. Again, tactics and strategy and the way they operate. These same people dismiss metaphysics also. Richard Dawkins dismisses metaphysics. We don't need that. We just have physics. Well, you know, other people, Lawrence Krauss, we don't need metaphysics. We have physics. 
But they what you're talking about, though, is no, the need for metaphysics, first they principles. Do, listen, they do have metaphysics. They're just lying to you. Let me give you an example. Lawrence Krauss wrote a book called A Universe from Nothing. Wow. That's pretty interesting, right? I mean, the universe from nothing? Wow. Read the book and it turns out that nothing is something. That is metaphysics gone bad. That is metaphysics turned into a three-card Monty dealer on Boston Common. If you write a book that says a universe from nothing, and then you bamboozle the poor public by telling them that, well, yeah, it's not really nothing, but it's what physics is not going to read really it fine to be nothing. What have you really done? You've committed a fraud. That's exactly what that book is. It's, a, it's an insult to our intelligence. One he thing, the universe one comes from nothing, and then he redefines nothing to be something. That's right. enough right there. I, again, obviously, you know, we're trying to, we, we're trying to, you know, we, we want to appeal to a wider audience here, not, but, but here's the point. Everybody knows nothing means the absence of anything. Everybody, you cannot redefine that. I don't care how many PhDs Lawrence Krauss has. I don't care how many scientific experiments he does. You have no right, no authority, no no basis upon which to redefine the word nothing. Nothing Thank you. means nothing. Thank you. That's what it means. Now Joe knows that. I know that. You know that. Everybody, the guy in the street knows that. Nothing means nothing. Doesn't Thank mean you, an idea. An idea is something. Gravity. Gravity is something. All these things that they try to inject into their nothingness are something. Something. An idiot smoke like me from North Jersey knows that. Because you understand metaphysics, Joe. Because any idiot. No. It takes a very special kind of idiot, actually. You have to go to school for a very long time. <laughs> you become yeah. enough of an idiot. To think that you can serve the human race by writing a book entitled A Universe from Nothing and then redefine nothing to mean something and then put your PhD after the title as if we're supposed to take this nonsense seriously. The guys like you, Joe, you're not, you're immune to this because you have a solid metaphysical understanding about the way being works. The way being works is that if you have nothing, that can't be something, because that involves a violation of the law of identity. You don't need somebody to vote for it. You don't need somebody to pat you on the back and say, nice job, Joe. You know it. And also, I think, too, Wolfgang Smith is a Roman Catholic. And I think I, I, I would presume that he's practicing faith, and I'm sure he is. As we all know, sin darkens the intellect. It does not matter how smart you are. We see this all the time. We see this on television. These are many of them. If you gave them a test, they're going to score really high. But clearly, their intellect is darkened. It is darkened. Common sense is not that common anymore. That's right. And clearly, they have an agenda. Their agenda is godless, and I That's will right. feed it at all costs, no matter, exactly what, right. no matter what the science. And I think that's a lot of what we're hearing about what this movie is uncovering. Well, you, the, the thing that's new, for 400 years, they have been able to win the argument about who has the better world's story. They can't win it anymore. Because now we have to let them tell us that nothing is really something, but it's nothing. The universe comes from this nothing that's really something. And just give us that much, and we'll show you a multiverse. And yes, this universe looks designed, but pay no attention to that. It's like winning the lottery, you see. I mean, it seems strange when you win the lottery, but somebody had to win it. Life couldn't arise except in one of the lottery winner universes. Do you see the monstrous insanity of this? They've yeah. reached the end of the road. They no longer have the compelling world story. Here's our problem, guys. We've been beaten up so badly by these guys for centuries that there are very few Catholic intellectuals willing 
to take the challenge and fight them on their own ground, Wolfgang Smith is one. I had to document this guy because it's not so much whether people understand him now. It's the next generation when things really are falling apart. Because guys, I got news for you. Things are falling apart, not just in physics, not just in finance, not just militarily. The pillars are wobbling. You know, in the beginning of the film, we say every pillar was wobbling at once and every pillar is wobbling at once. We are reaching one of those moments in history where one arc of human history is coming to an end and another one is about to begin. And the problem is Catholics are so disoriented and confused and demoralized. They think our period's coming to an end. They couldn't possibly be more wrong. It is the supposedly invincible scientific Goliath. He's the one that's in deep, deep trouble. But Catholics have always been tremendous supporters of physical science. We can't just throw the baby out with the bathwater, and this is why Wolfgang Smith is so important. He shows us how to take the legitimate achievements of physics and reintegrate them into a worldview that allows us to be human again, that allows the grass to be green, the world to be a theophany, a place of God's presence. And we can still do quantum mechanics and get those new 5G phones working for you just fine. This is what makes this man so important. I'm just so glad I got him documented before he left this world. I, have, I would love to see the film become very popular. It's starting to show indications that it might. But I don't really care. In a hundred years, this film will be gigantically powerfully important because it will be the only way to encounter the man who resolved the quantum enigma. And he's gonna make it. Rick, what's the timeline? Uh, for for the film screenings, where's it going to be released? How do we you open how, yesterday? How are you moving forward with this? We opened yesterday at the Science Center, uh, the Carnegie Science Center, in Pittsburgh. Wonderful. Uh, we are going to be opening next Friday in Los Angeles. We'll be opening in Cleveland, Boston. Um, we have San Francisco. We have Orange County. We have Topeka, Kansas, we have Cincinnati, Ohio, and more cities coming almost every day now. You know, we'll go as far as the audience takes us. We found a distributor, amazingly, uh, you know, uh, you would never imagine that this distributor would pick up a picture of film like this, you know. He is by no means Christian, he is by no means Catholic, but he loves the film. He just got behind the film, he's booking it all over the country. Um, you know, we'll take it as far as, as, as it rides, then we'll put it out on digital. And I'll tell you, you got to have this and you got to have the principle. If you don't have the principle in this movie, shame on you. You got to have this. As the world begins to dissolve in front of our eyes, it's the Catholics who will be responsible for putting it back. It's very much like when the Roman Empire collapsed, civilization was restored by the monks coming out of the monasteries where they had kept the learning and they had kept the wisdom. We've got to start taking responsibility for upping our intellectual chops again. All right. Believe me, the Goliath of scientism has failed. He had a great run, but it's over. Well, good. Let's, 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 let's do what we can to drive the nail into that coffin, if, uh, if you know what I mean. Joe Racinello, did you, did you uh, want to... No, I found the conversation enlightening, to be honest with you, and we'll do everything we can to uh, promote it. Um, we'll send it to all our contacts. And God if there's, bless you. And if there's you anything know, you can do or we can do for you moving forward, please just give us a shout. You, you know, we're awesome. I just like to mention the end of quantumreality.com. Go there. Give us your contact info. Be part of this story because look. We're going to be in probably 15 cities with, without even trying. If this thing starts to take off, there's no telling how far it could go. And you definitely want this film on, on digital. 
This and the principle you've got to have. Because Real quick, Rick, go go into that to tell our audience where uh, where they could go to 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 be able to view the principle. Now the principlemovie dot com. Okay, That's Bob's son Janice's site, man. You can get that film tomorrow, and you've got to have it. I mean, five years after release, that is still by far the most important and interesting cosmology documentary. Forget Cosmos. I mean, the principle is 10 times more interesting and more important than that. Bob Sungenis can cook, hook you up with a copy of The Principle tomorrow at www.theprincipalmovie.com. Everyone should have that film and everyone should watch that film because it's the perfect introduction to the end of quantum reality. The principle deals with cosmology, the world in the large. The end of quantum reality deals with quantum physics, the world in the small. That's where Goliath is losing the ball game as we speak. And uh, there's a new world story about to come. Well, let's sling that rock into Goliath's face. Um, I love and, uh, now, and, and one thing, hopefully, Rick, um, you'll be a friend of the show. Uh, I love it, yes. Yeah. In an ideal world, we'll try to put it together. I, again, you know, Joe and I, in about an hour, we're going to be going into the breach on our on our, our podcast that we do. If every I week. have something interesting, I'll tell you guys. You have, have something interesting, you tell me. When it's right, we'll get back together again. I'll tell you how things are going. I think it would be a great, I think, thank you, Rick. And I think it would be a great conversation to have. Maybe we can get Bob St. Janus involved. Oh, yeah, I'd get love Bob. To be able to have. Ideally, in, or maybe over the next two, three months, I'd love to be able to have a great conversation where we could talk about how this, the, 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 um, the atheistic scientific community, the scientism is, or the adherence of scientism, how that all plays into the culture where I think it would be a great conversation to have. So uh, we really want to thank you, Rick, for what you're doing. You know, because you got you got a lot of nerve. We Joe and I usually use a different word than nerve. So you know what? <laughs> we got a lot of nerve uh, to 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 challenge these people, but they need to be challenged, and we they applaud you. And 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 uh, for their own good, for, man. For their own good, for their own flourishing, for their own humanity, it's got to be done. Hey guys, Johnson. thanks a lot for having me on. The end of quantumreality.com. The principal move. Excuse me, if wrong. The end of quantumreality dot com and the principal movie.com both of them man worth it all right sounds good joe you want to take us out uh as always our conversation is your conversation and it is going on everywhere thank you rick you're the man and uh it was a great conversation and uh we hope to talk to you soon thanks talk to you guys soon. talk to you soon all right <laughs>